The arts is really just up to you to make money at that point. You're a freelancer. You, you know, there's nothing guaranteed. So upon getting out of college 10 years ago, I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? I can teach with that. I can go try to be a film composer. That was one of my goals. But I've always had an um, interest in prosperity, and I wanted to do it my way with, with arts, right? Not going to sell something I didn't really believe in. So I wanted to merge these two worlds, arts, arts and business, to be able to help other artists prosper as well. Um, so we are partnered with Napster as of now, uh, who was developing the actual platform. Uh, but yeah, you guys have already read that, so I can go on. Projections. Uh, so, second quarter is over. We're actually looking to the fall to launch, so my apologies on that first one. We want to acquire 700,000 users in the first 12 to 18 months, and we want to monetize in the first 12 to 24 months with AR adaptions and user, as the user base solidifies. So, as the need um, becomes apparent, we'll adopt some of those features so that we're staying current with the market. I believe that's it. That is Apollo. I was going to put this down somewhere, but there's nowhere to put it, so I'll hold it. Alright, thank you so much. And the first question we like to ask here at One Million Cups is what can we as the community do for you? Sure, so right now we're currently looking for funding. So we're looking for access to capital. Uh, we're in the concept and idea phase right now. So what we want to do is just get this platform um, hashed out. We do have prototypes that are ready. We want to get the uh, uh, platform built so we can get these users using it, get the uh, buzz out there. So all we need is just to be able to get that app built, and from there it's going to skyrocket, I believe. The second thing is uh, get on it and use it, see which, if you like it. You know? So I'll be in the corner, uh, we can exchange emails, and I can let you know exactly when our, our launch date is. Uh, but prior to that, I can let you know when our beta starts so we can get your help with that. That'd be awesome. I think you guys will like it. Thanks. And at this time, we'd like to open up questions to the audience. How does the revenue model work? Can you just tell us that we can see it? Sure. So, um, a pop takes a portion of all the sales. So, an artist opens a storefront. They sell an item, uh, whether it's digital, uh, tangible product or service, Pavel takes a percentage of that. Also, uh, as the user base grows, uh, advertising is going to be done by arts-based business conglomerates. So it's, it's a pretty familiar model. So those monthly subscriptions, I mean those uh, little transactions add up, as you know. Uh, at this point, uh, what I see is uh, kind of like an Instagram uh, approach where is this going to be where people are wearing something and you can click on it and then you can purchase it and they're, they're wearing their own brand or they're, um, they're just taking a picture with whatever tangible items that they're offering and you can click on it and it takes you to a link to purchase or uh, is this what a bubble is? Absolutely. Well, we want to be that link, though. So we don't want them going anywhere else, necessarily. We want to build something where they can grab it right then. Yeah. Um, so you're absolutely right. And also, we want to be the space for the artists. So Instagram is a very wide space. There's a lot going on there. Facebook as well. So we want to take uh, the approach from like being in Walmart, where there's everything imaginable there. I hate going to Walmart to creating a space where it's kind of a boutique experience like we were talking about, catered towards their interests. But the whole thing is around like a retail sale, right? It's not... And it's a social marketplace. So that means that soci sociability is number one, because that's how we get those tra transactions created. So sharing, liking, all of that social media stuff, and that will eventually lead to a transaction, in my belief, but we want to keep it very social. But yes, it, the, the, the end goal is to convert a customer to and it's a really uh, widen the palette for the arts, in my opinion. Any questions in the back? Okay. Okay, thanks a lot for coming out. Uh, quick question, kind of along those lines, what's your plan for kind of acquiring that for traffic, both from both an artist standpoint as well as customers? 
then additionally, once you get them there, how are you going to keep them when you have, when you just have some juggernauts like if Instagram decides, hey, I want to, you know, all of a sudden develop a boutique just like that and I take everybody away. I'm just kind of curious, like, what's your, what's your game plan, your go-to-market strategy in terms of, from both an artist standpoint, how are you going to get them in and get them to be loyal to you, as well as your customers as well? I think it's going to be the customer experience. Um, and, and I don't know the answer to that right away because I don't know what Instagram will do. But I know that with our brand and our customer experience, we really want to make it as comfortable for um, the artists as possible. So if Instagram isn't doing that, then we're going to catch all of that. Um, specifically, I can't answer that right now. But that's a very good question. And we're definitely thinking about those things because I realize there's some big players in the game, but they don't have the flag of the arts. You know, RC kind of has the flag of the arts, but if you have a significant cash flow to spend on that, uh, not that millennials don't, but um, it's, it's more of the auction space. We're not in the auction space. It's kind of like, I made something, I'm sharing it. If you like it, buy it. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble. Can you do a comparison, like, you and Etsy, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding what the difference is. Sure. Thank so you. Our target market is different. So with Etsy, from the research and the study I've done, the generation market for that is more of a generation X and above. And I say that because it's more in the arts and crafts space. We're not really in the arts and crafts space, we're more in, um, how do I put this? Okay, so like photography, dance, music, film, creative, creative space. Thank you so much. So, um, so that's how RT is a little different. I think RT is a little more commercial than we are. Um, we're trying to get the arts to be more commercial, but they're already in that kind of Michaels type space. But these people are personally making those types of crafts. That's how I see it. That's it. That makes a lot of sense, but I guess I don't understand, like, if, so the creative arts, if somebody choreographs a dance, like, how does that, how do I buy that? For sure, so, already on Vimeo, um, I, I watch a lot of tarot readers, and what they do is they have a free clip on YouTube, they'll go into your whole tarot for the month, and then they'll leave you hanging, and you gotta go to video, uh, Vimeo to purchase, uh, the rest of that, and that's 10 to 20 bucks. So if a choreographer has a has some kind of 30 second clip or minute clip, then you can go purchase the rest through the side game. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Quick disclosure, I have my own arts and culture startup, nothing what you're doing, uh, but completely different space. But uh, just curious, and I think part of the question was already had, uh, asked earlier about what's the range of products, quote unquote products, that somebody can buy on uh, a platform? Very good question. So anything digital, tangible, and a service product. So if somebody is a, because we're going to be in a space of healing arts too, so if somebody's a Reiki healer, offering their services, you know, through a pop-up, um, if somebody is you know, music producers sharing that production through pop up you know, to purchase it. That's, you know, product, service, and digital. If, if somebody's a fine artist, now, remember, shipping and all that is on them. So if they're a fine artist and they connect with somebody over here and they're in Tanzania, then they'll have to get that product over. I'd say probably 80% of our product is gonna be digital and service, tangible, you know. We're gonna partner with some companies to work out some deals to make make it easier for them to ship those things, but we eliminated our self ability. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So I know you've talked about market validation and what other companies are doing, um, but has your company done any uh, footwork in regards to like engaging artist acquisition? Have you sent out any surveys? Are you like? Garner a mailing list? Are you running Instagram campaigns? Like, how how are you gauging your own focus? Uh, and if not, that's probably that'd be a good thing to do. Absolutely, that's what we're doing now. So, because we're in the idea phase now, that this whole 
concept is kind of complete. Now we're testing the assumptions on it. So going to campuses, um, collecting emails. I, I sit down at Starbucks and I'll randomly, you know, present to people, you know, and, and get feedback. So we're in that space right now of just collecting that data. Um, but we see the signs all around as far as where the world is headed. And so we're just capitalizing on that. Thanks. And any other questions? I feel like I've seen that name uh, pop up before. What, does it stand for something or what's that from? No. <laughs> um, it stands for community and it's actually uh, Nigerian. So, yeah. It's cool. And we have time for one or two more questions. Hey, so as entrepreneurs, we love hearing about stories. And as Simon Speaks says, start with why. So we would like to hear about your why, what made you twitch to start this thing. OK. So I kind of had an epiphany maybe three years ago, four years ago now, 2014. Um, I was sitting on a couch and I was trying to just figure out what I wanted to do um, outside of it. And this idea came to where it's like, you know, I really want to bring people together in a space to where we can um, peer into what's going on in different communities in the arts without having to be there physically. So um, it kind of just came out of nowhere. You know how this is kind of going in and out, but uh, right here. But um, you know how sometimes you wake up and you have like a really clear vision of what you're supposed to do, a dream? That's kind of how it went. Um, I work. Should I use that one? Okay. Really close. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. okay. I felt like I was the loud um, but yeah, my why is really just prosperity, abundance for myself and others like me, you know, that have creative businesses that want to prosper through those. Um, so again, it came out of a vision. I know it kind of sounds hokey, but that's how it came. And I've been plugging away since then, trying to just piece it together and make it uh, something that is seamless, you know. So hopefully that answered that question. So Okay, I have, I have my question still. So my question is about your team. Like you said, you've uh, partnered up with Appster to get the app built. Um, and I was just curious, kind of as you start to grow this concept, and let's say, uh, you know, once you raise that initial funding, what kind of talent are you looking for to bring on to your team in the early stages? For sure. Definitely some talent um, in the specific area of marketing and finance. We don't need a very large team. I'd say two more individuals, uh, two to three more individuals, just to cover the basis of those major components of business. Uh, but Appster would be the uh, technical co-founder without equity. So it's a lump sum. Um, we beta test, we make changes. It's not like you're dropping the money and they stop you know, with the development and say, hey, here it is, we're done. It's kind of an ongoing testing as the app is built. So that's another thing that I would be looking for from the community um, uh, is plugging into some areas where there's that kind of time. Yeah. Again, if you, if you want to test out the, uh, the beta, just see me in the corner after the exchange of emails, and I'd be glad to. Get that going. Thank you guys. Awesome. Awesome job. All right. For those of you who it's your first time, uh, oh, thanks. Uh, you can see how it's super valuable to participate in the Q&A. It's a really unique event where you actually get to uh, ask the startup founders directly about you know, how they plan to grow their business from, uh, from scratch. So thank you again to Jason for being so transparent and open with, uh, with your story. Uh, before we bring our next presenters on, I do want to see if um, if David's here from Reed Bentley, if he wants to come up. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're right here. Uh, yeah, come on up. We'll have a, a word from our sponsor. Hi. Um, 
so first off, just uh, make sure you know, there's a lot more coffee, please drink it. Uh, Rob Russell from reInvently. What is reInvently? We are a uh, mobile product agency. What's a mobile product agency? We do beautiful application design and development. If you're looking to be able to go ahead and build a mobile app, get a mobile app tested, get one out to the market, understand what you need to do to build a mobile app. We also have workshops that we can go ahead and work with you on to go ahead and understand what do you need to do? What's your target? How are you going to be designing? Um, lots of other questions. Happy to talk to you about it. I don't want to keep waiting. I don't want to make you have to wait for the next guy to come up. So I'll just end it right there. Right over there, reinvently. You can look at us up at reinvently.com. Yeah, and a shout out to our other sponsors that make this event possible. Um, obviously, the DEC, that's the Dallas Entrepreneur Center for providing us with the venue. Uh, our video and photography is done by Michael Bruner. Uh, and thank you to uh, High Brew Coffee and for two. They also, they're not here this morning, but uh, every two weeks or so, they, they do come and provide us with additional breakfast treats, so thank you to them. Uh, and yeah, next up, we'll, uh, all stand up once more and uh, welcome our next presenter on stage, Evan from City Gym. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for standing up. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about City Gym. City Gym is something really, really unique, and I think everybody's going to be able to relate and, and appreciate uh, what we're doing. But first, you have to know where we came from. Uh, my name is Evan Duncan. I'm the owner of Tough Fitness. Tough Fitness is an all-military veteran personal training company here in Dallas. Uh, we specialize in a unique form of training we call small team training. And with small team training, we'll take four to six individuals that share a common goal, pair them up in a high energy, high accountability team training environment. Uh, it's really geared, you know, to bring uh, the team dynamics everyone, but more importantly, a high quality uh, uh, coaching and, and, and training at an affordable price, what you might pay for a typical one-size-fits-all group training workout somewhere else. Um, we're now in our fifth year. I guess it'll make our sixth year. Uh, we're, we've been we've been with this five and a half years. Uh, we're looking to do a quarter million dollars this year alone. Um, and this kind of led me to where we're at now. City Gym is a community where those who are committed to being the best versions of themselves are provided the tools, education, and support they require to do so. Um, our gym, City Gym, is uh, focused primarily on membership experience rather than volume and numbers. Um, so ultimately what we're doing is taking uh, a value-based approach rather than a volume-based approach, which we've all seen for the last 40 years from most large box gyms. Uh, a few years ago, I'd say 10 years ago actually, I, I recognized the problem and I knew that you know eventually I'd like to open my own gym, but first I needed to do a little research. So two and a half years ago, I began uh, I began going to every major gym that I could and seeing what are they doing right, what are they doing wrong, what can they improve on. Uh, and, and since then, uh, I, I, I've uh, now been to every other major gym in Dallas, and, and we'll go over what I found, but ultimately, I saw a problem. The problem was that the fitness consumer, the modern day fitness consumer, has evolved past the fixed motion machines of 40 years ago. Uh, they've evolved past sitting down on the machine, looking at a picture next to them, to try to figure out what to do, right? Um, the health club industry, on the other hand, is not. The health club industry still has the same scale wall color, stock photos on the wall, uh, generic quotes, you know, and, and, and poor customer service that they had in the 80s. Uh, ultimately, this neglected consumer is now being driven to boutique studios. Everybody knows boutique studios. Uh, it's the Pilates, the yoga, the spin. The, now they have burst climber gyms, right? They have every specialty you can think of. And um, now, more and more consumers are forced to hold multiple memberships instead of just holding their one large box gym membership for $39 a month. When I saw this, this statistic on the bottom, it's what really opened my eyes. This was 
about two and a half years ago, and I realized that 86% of this $38 billion industry now holds multiple memberships, right? And so I thought to myself, why do people have to have multiple memberships? Why can't they just have a membership to an LA Fitness or 24 hour, or, you know, the fitness studio? And this is what I came up with. Health clubs are obviously known for variety, they're known for space, they're known for amenities. Uh, but what they lack is customer service. They lack a community feel. They lack high quality personal training, right? If anyone's ever had a trainer at Big Box Gym, you know you pay $80 for a session to someone that's getting paid $15 to $20 for that session. Uh, and there's a disparity between what you're paying for and what you actually get. On the other hand, these studios are known for high quality specialized training. But what you get in that and, and, and a community feel, you're uh, relinquishing and variety, right? You have to choose your specialty. So if you're a member to a spin studio, Soul Cycle, or they, they do a great job of what they're doing, but you better like to spin four days a week, uh, or else you're going to have to hold multiple memberships again. So I saw an opportunity. Why not take the best of both worlds? Why not have a large scale uh, studio that has a small gym feel, provides high quality, affordable personal training, um, but also delivers education tools and support. Most people go to a gym trying to solve a problem and instead they're given a trip on a card and a good luck high five and they have to figure it out, right? And they spend 45 minutes on a treadmill or doing the four exercises that they're comfortable with. And after a couple weeks or maybe a couple months if they're lucky, they quit, right? And they keep paying for the membership it makes them feel good, it's only $39 a month, but eventually that runs out, they cancel their membership and they go to the next person looking to solve that problem, right? We're actually going to solve the problem. We're going to focus on the consumer that actively utilizes our membership instead of focusing on volume and selling as many, many memberships as possible. We also need to build on our established team of military veteran health professionals. Uh, there's really three things that make City Gym unique. Obviously, we have a main focus on membership experience. We're the first of our kind to have a community floor trainer available uh, for questions, guidance, safety. We're providing ongoing nutrition and exercise coaching and education to all of our members, even the most basic members. Uh, and then everything about the gym is really geared around community. <clears throat> also, then there's our small team training, right, which provides an affordable, high quality option. Um, now we're able to take care of a larger percentage of our members with personal training providing a more uh, training-focused environment, right? So people are coming there to work and they're fueled off that energy. And then ultimately, we're all-encompassing wellness. We're not just a uh, uh, CrossFit studio. We're not just a bodybuilding gym. We're not a Pilates or yoga studio. We're everything, all of the best, most popular and effective training styles under one single roof, right? So during that research, I thought, what are people using? What are people drawn to? And now we're creating that all under a single roof. Uh, I'm out of time, but you know this is not only great for providing training and jobs to military veterans getting out, but we're here to revolutionize the industry. We're here to change the way people experience health and fitness uh, at a you know cellular level. So thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot, Evan. And we do like to ask, what can we as a community do for you? Actually, I have a lot of things. <laughs> you know, we are, we're currently raising capital, uh, this is a seasonal business, so we're, I'd rather not open this business in May of next year, so um, we're kind of down to the wire with our capital raise. Uh, right now it's, it's a matter of getting somebody to break the ice for all the other investors. Uh, but more importantly, we have a website at City Gym Dallas. Um, if you put your name and email address on there, you get 20% off your membership for life. We're also using that kind of as a proof of concept for investors. Uh, and it's, it's worth mentioning that we have over 180 free commitments with zero dollars spent more than it's just from you know, events like this or me handing out uh, business cards. So uh, that and uh, if anybody knows someone that could run our social media for me, I, I have too many balls to juggle right now and, and that's one of the things that um, I don't particularly have a passion for. So um, please come, come give me a card or someone else. Thank you. Um, any questions for the audience? Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Uh, my name is Cordero Abdullah. I think it's a really cool concept. I love Planet Fitness this morning, and okay. they absolutely hate it there. <laughs> you say it's corny, you know, they have, uh, have the no drop weight thing. Um, but for me playing football, 
uh, it's been kind of hard for me working out, and I like the group setting, you know, to be able to compete against someone. Um, so I just wanted to give you some ideas about kind of finding those former athletes, because we're used to working out, you know, in groups without just kind of training ourselves. Um, but I think it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, you said CityDallas.com? City Gym Dallas. City Gym Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. All right, the same, basically the same handle for all our social media. Uh, we're more on Instagram. And um, if this gets big enough, what do you think about possibly like franchising out? You know, like LA, you know, yeah, Miami, so this, stuff like that. This is definitely one of those that I see in every major metropolitan area in the country. You know, kind of that. Um, when I get to it, we're, we're looking at the design district. Um, obviously, if anybody knows, you know, anything about where Dallas is headed, there are 168 million dollars invested in the design district in the last year. We're kind of looking for that forgotten about industrial warehouse district that's uh, up and coming, right? And so, you know, this is the design district of Chicago, of, you know, Austin, Houston, yeah, LA. Um, but ultimately, this is a five-year play. I'd like to open three locations in the next five years, at uh, which time you know, we'll be open to the position. And uh, one more question. Uh, how affordable is the, do you think this is going to be? Yeah, so our, our pricing definitely reflects the value that we're providing, right? We're not trying to be the plant business. We're not trying to be the low price player. We're not geared towards the 18 to 70 year old. We're geared towards the 25 to 45 year old professional, right? Um, those that actively utilize their membership and are willing to pay a little bit more for better quality, better service, better experience, better environment. Um, that's who we're going after. We're not counting on selling 7,000 memberships and and only 10% of people showing up, right? We're going towards that individual that's been let down by the previous gym that was coming to solve a problem and instead was given that card and, and told good luck. Or the guy like you and I that really, you know, just needs something better, something more, something more than what they've been providing for the last 40 years, you know? Um, new equipment, new design, you know? Um, exposed brick, graffiti walls. We have a military Humvee that was donated that will be used to push and pull on its own track. Like everything about this gym is a conversation piece, right? It's made to get people talking, to get people to take a picture and want to post on social media, you know, um, to provide experience. So, uh. yeah, another question again. I like our concept, especially the variety of different trainings put together. Uh, if I'm the investor, uh, it sounds very expensive. <laughs> In terms of square footage, and also you actually uh, put, uh, put some bullet points where you want it located in the uh, like, affluent area of the city. So uh, do you have an idea like how much is this going to cost and uh, how, how are you going to uh, the other tech startup, startups mostly get, you know, 100,000, 200,000 for funding. Uh, so, what's your plan? Uh, we're raising $1.1 $1 .1 million. It's an 18,000 square foot um, spot. We're originally looking at a 25,000 square foot um, location, but the we're sharing a 50,000 square foot building with a co-working space, which is also really unique. Obviously, we share the same target demographic. Um, they ended up taking 32,000 square feet instead of 25 because uh, they had funding first and they got to make that fun. So we're, we're left with 18,000 square feet. It's a really unique space. Uh, it's right across the street from the Virgin Hotel. It's got, this is actually one of the other spaces we're looking at. This, our new one has 20 foot vaulted ceilings. Um, we're going to have two massive bay doors that kind of open up and provide like an open air, natural light uh, feel. and. Um, did I get all of your questions? Yeah, um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? So, uh, is it difficult to raise this kind of money? I mean, it was basically a four point of concept or? So, yeah, th thank you, because um, one, of the, one of the major points I wanted to make, and it might be in here later, is uh, because of, yeah. Because of our established client base, established brand with Tough Fitness, now in our you know, fifth year, uh, we're actually going to move in with $25,000 a month in recurring monthly revenue before we sell a 
single pre-sale membership, right? So typically, you know, large gyms decide they're spending ten thousand dollars a month on marketing just to get to that point, right? And they're losing cash for the first year. We're actually looking to be profitable within the first uh, three months. And so it's it's a unique uh, idea moving an established personal training company into a gym, right? Uh, and, and obviously, you know, all of our all of our established client base are paying anywhere from three hundred to eight hundred and forty dollars a month, you know, instead of instead of moving over a bunch of pre-sale basic memberships, we're moving over um, you know high dollar clients. We're moving over uh, a client base that has a high return. I love the uh, wellness um, inclusion under one umbrella with the fitness. I'm wondering uh, what your ideas are as far as design for wellness, like yoga and, and uh, I don't know if there's going to be any healing yeah. things going on there, but uh, I saw an industrial look, but I'm wondering what, what design and colors, yeah. you know, because I know neons are kind of the 80s and um, the warm, warm colors, the natural colors are more that wellness um, look. So I'm wondering how that's all going to tie in, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thanks for that question. It's another great point that I, that I want to make. I also want to bring you on to so complete like the meditation classes. Uh, and you got an awesome voice. Um, so this is the Pilates Yoga Mindfulness Room. Beyond working out, beyond teaching people how to eat effectively to reach their goals, we have an all encompassing wellness piece, right? So we're going to provide instructional led meditation classes in the middle of the day for people to hop over from that co-working space, get out of their minds for a second, you know, get out of the city for a second and kind of reset. Um, we also have a, a mindfulness coach on the staff, right? So this will all be included in the basic membership, right? We have a set number of classes that you can take, but it doesn't have to be fitness. It doesn't have to be nutrition based. It can be spiritual based. It can be wellness based, right? Um, and so this room itself kind of has its own feel. It's that vibrant, white, clean, beautiful, you know, look that kind of oversees everything else, right? And then the rest of the gym is that exposed brick, freestanding mirrors, uh, you know, kind of edgy appearance. All of our equipment is square and it's black, right? So we don't have a bunch of mixed match equipment like you see in gyms today or we have something that looks like it was purchased from Walmart that's round and silver next to some machine that looks like it's 15 years old, you know? Uh, we have a very common theme here. We have repurposed things like the shipping container, 55 gallon drums that are branded for our trash cans and the whole thing is pleasant. Everything about the gym is meant to look different than anything else out there, right? It's, I, I don't want, even from our dumbbell racks to our whatever, everything we're going to have custom-made, like, um, weight-bearing equipment, right? So you're not looking at, like, a, a, a ball rack that you saw in Walmart the other day, you know? Um, so industrial, edgy, uh, rustic, our colors are copper, slate, and matte black. Um, and so it'll kind of hold that theme, you know? And, and it'll, our design is targeted around our target demographic, a 25 to 45 year old professional, instead of catering to you know the 70 year old who just wants to walk for 30 minutes and feel great like in a comfortable environment, and the 18 year old that wants to kind of throw weights around like that. You know, we're we have a we have a target professional demographic, and that's who we're catering to. Much like you know this building, exposed ivy, exposed brick, you know, natural lighting, like. Um, that's what we're going for. So you're clearly not a Planet Fitness 24-hour fitness thing. Uh, how are you different than, say, Equinox or Premier Fitness? Just sort of those high-end uh, gyms, other than just the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and other than the lower price point, right? Because that's not, um, our price has nothing to do with what we stand for. And Equinox is there as a premium gym, right? They have $170 a month membership. People are buying into, um, into the status idea of being a part of an elite gym, you know? And everybody, everyone knows that if you're a member of that gym, you're paying $179, right? And, and they're there for the um, eucalyptus towels. They're there for the marble walls. They're there for like this extravagant build out. The, the, the newest, most high tech, you know, equipment somewhere. We're 
focused on creating value. We're focused on what we provide and experience and value rather than what we provide in eucalyptus towels and, and um, the highest end uh, uh, locker rooms you'll, you'll find, right? So we're, what you're paying for is the education. What you're paying for is the experience. What you're paying for is having a clear set path to accomplish the goals that you're going there to accomplish um, and not being kind of left out to figure it out on your own. And so, the, you know, it's that customer A that's been let down that needs the education, the tools, the, the guidance, and then that customer B, uh, the, the guy that actively utilizes his membership but wants new equipment, wants a different environment, wants some energy to his gym, you know, wants to be part of something where people come to work, not to be seen or check in on Facebook or take a selfie, you know. Uh, that's, that's what we stand for. And, and it also, it has that pool, it has that, you know, it, it is a $99 price point, right? So you still kind of have that, you know, and we're going to cap our membership base off at 1,500 members. And, and, and we're going to start actually at Wakeness, which I think is really cool. But um, we're not only doing that to provide better experience, right? To be able to, you know, maintain our customer base like we want to, um, to be able to call everyone by their first name, but also um, because we kind of, I don't want this to ever be an overcrowded gym. I want it to be a place where like people can come, do what they want to do, um, you know, stick around our smoothie juice bar, our airstream smoothie juice bar lounge, and get some work done, or, or you know, uh, network with people. And so it's it's just meant to be more of a community that uh, throw your headphones in, don't look anybody in the eye, and uh, you know, leave. and then three boutique um, gym memberships. And the reason for that is like variety of time with classes. So like the boutique memberships provide early morning classes, you know, before my work day begins. And then the big box gym provides those like, I can be at the gym until nine o'clock at night if I want to. So will your gym provide some of those like um, variety of times and classes so that you can take classes early in the morning, but also maybe during lunchtime and then like later on in the day? Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think um, we're, we're able to do that because we have a larger, larger space, right? So essentially, like, you know, what we want to do is is take what these boutique studios, what your three boutique studios are providing to you, um, but throw it under one single roof, right? So, you know, we're open from 5 to 11. And, and if, if there's a customer base there that's ready to purchase a class or that, you know, wants a class, we're going to have it. Well, and you know the idea of being attached to a co-working space. Uh, there's going to be a lot of midday classes, right? People are going to want to hop over on their lunch break for a regular class, or you know, whatever the meditation class, or, or so on and so forth. So I think it's just a great, it's a great location to be able to provide them. You're not having to go 20 minutes out of your way. You know, this, the design district is the most easily accessible area of Dallas, right? It's at the end of the tolls, at the end of 75s, at the end of 35 to come into Dallas. You know, it's super accessible from Kessler Park and from Bishop Bars area, which is an underserved market. So, um, yeah, we're, we plan on if if it's if uh, if we build it, they'll come. We're gonna if they come, we'll build it. Kind of thing. And then I have um, one last question. You mentioned that you were planning on opening, uh, I think, three gems by the end of next year was the goal? Five. Five gems, okay. Five, five years. Five, five years, three gems. What's the goal for maybe expanding it outside? So what the boutique gyms provide is like very local. I can't go to another boutique gym under the same umbrella and use my membership. But with my 24-hour fitness, as I travel for work, if I go to another state, I can use my 24-hour yeah. fitness membership. Yeah. So as you expand, will your membership carry between locations? Absolutely. Thanks. Um, unfortunately, we're out of time for questions. But if you do want to ask questions to any of our presenters, uh, they'll be hanging around afterwards. So definitely come find them and come talk to them. And can we give Evan another round of applause? Yeah, really great job by both startups. I love that they both kind of had a community building theme to them, and of course, Papa Co in the name, too. Uh, all about community this morning. 
So I do have some, uh, a few announcements just to wrap up. Uh, so if you are using the One Million Cups mobile app, now is the time to leave a review for both presenters. Uh, that's only going to be available for the next hour on the app. And you can also go to our One Million Cups Dallas Facebook page to leave us a review. Let us know what you thought, especially if you're a first timer. Uh, and a second announcement uh, from the deck. So this is a this is the uh, second to last week of co-working at the deck. Uh, by now you know that the deck is moving and there will be no co-working here in their future home. Uh, we will continue to run One Million Cups in this space for the month of June and we'll be joining the deck at their new location which is going to be in Uptown at the Centrum starting in July. So please keep that in mind, especially a lot of you that have been regulars. We want to make sure you get the get the note about that, that we will be moving to that new location starting in July. And then the, uh, the third announcement here is about the Fort Worth Startup Crawl. So that's actually going on tomorrow, and it's the inaugural Fort Worth Startup Crawl, which is all about uh, finding out what cool businesses and startups are being built right under your nose. It also gives you an opportunity to dip your toes into the life of an entrepreneur and see if it's the life for you. Uh, visit not only the startups, but also some of the resources that are going to help them get where they're going. Uh, you can see Rachel or Isabel for details, and they have a website, which is startupcrawlfw.org. Uh, tickets are 10 bucks, and that will be a really cool event to check out, especially if you're uh, new here in Dallas and you're wanting to get plugged in. Uh, I would definitely recommend going out to that. So, yeah, that's all my announcements. Um, yeah, can we show the sponsor slide real quick? Yes, another big thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, thank you again, David, from Reed and Bentley. And uh, uh, like, yeah, like we said, if you want to stick around afterwards and network, uh, all the presenters are still here hanging out. So thank you again to you guys. And uh, that's a wrap right there. Thank you.